we're going to talk about elasticity. It seems like a strange subject to talk about in economics. Treat goods differently, because they are. And if the price of a good goes up, we might purchase a lot less of it. It's elastic. The, the demand has moved a lot. It may be we'll purchase the same amount at the higher price, because it's a necessity good. In which case we'd say it's inelastic. The, the demand is inelastic. So when we talk about elasticity in economics, we're talking about the responsiveness of demand to a change in one of the determinants. For example, the change in price or the change in income. When we look at the change and say the change in price, what happens to do the change in the demand? And that's the subject matter of economics. So let's go through uh, this class fairly fast now because we've got an idea of what it is. It simply means responsiveness, as I said. If we increase the price of a good, we want to know how much this affects the demand for the good. So if we're a producer and we want to put the price up, we will lose all the customers. We will lose a lot of customers. We will have less receipts at the end. Are we worse off by putting the price up? Or are we better off? How do the customers see the product? In other words, we want to know how responsive the demand is to changes in price. So we can't just increase the price. We have to know what the response is or the likely response is by the customers. If you're a producer and you're selling something and you want to increase the price because your costs have gone up or because you want to make more profit or whatever the reason, you have to think, what will happen to my customers? Will my customers still buy it? Will they buy the same amount? Will they buy a lot less? In other words, how responsive is the demand to changes in price? There are different types of price elasticity or different ways of measuring it, perhaps is a better way of putting it. We have price elasticity. We have called something called cross price elasticity. If the price of petrol rises, what happens to the demand for cars? Uh, if the price of butter increases, will more margarine be sold? We've got income elasticity. As our incomes rise, we'll be buying a lot more of some item because we have more, in more income. And we have supply elasticity. How much will the um, producers supply if the price is falling or the price is increasing in the market? How responsive will they be to changes in their supply? So this concept of elasticity seems to be very important. The concept of elasticity of demand is simply a measure of the sensitivity of demand to changes in the price of the good. That's a good definition. So please note it. It's the sensitivity of demand to changes in the price of the good. That's what elasticity is. We could have the sensitivity of the supply to changes in the price of the good. It's sensitivity. It's elasticity. Some sellers may increase the price of their product and yet sell the same amount, while others may increase the price of their product and experience a large fall in the sales as a result. Depends on the product. Depends on how the customers view the product. Is the product important to us? If the price goes up, are we going to buy the same amount? Is it necessary for our existence? Is it necessary for our way of life? If it is, we will try to maintain our access to the good. Even though the price has gone up, we try to buy the same amount. So, some goods, if the price goes up, we just stop buying it. It's, it's not important to us. Now, the uses of elasticity. Well, the government wants to know, because the government imposes a tax on goods. Uh, it doesn't want to impose a, a tax on something that nobody's going to buy. If it, if it increases the, the, the tax on some confectionery, 
that that school children buy. School children are very rational consumers. They've got limited incomes, and they know what they're after. So, all credit to school children. They know what they want to buy when they go to the shop. And if the government increases the price of some of their sweets or their confectionery or whatever, the, the school children might switch away, buy something else. They might buy apples, for example. Very unlikely, I agree, but it could happen. Okay, the government is interested in the price elasticity of demand when setting levels of indirect, indirect taxes. Some items they will increase. Mostly items which are addictive, like, for example, tobacco. Tobacco is bad for our health and uh, is perhaps not as important nowadays as it was in the past. But in the past, when every, lots of people were addicted to it, the government could increase the tax on tobacco, and it was a good way of getting money for the government. Alcohol is another one. Or petrol. If the government increases the price of petrol, adds some tax on, um, people generally have to buy it if they've got petrol cars. Only items which are inelastic in demand, that is relatively insensitive to price changes, that attract taxes in the budget. The government does not just impose a tax on some frivolous item, some piece of confectionery that nobody, very few people buy. Because nobody, nobody cares about that. It's not important to us. So the government, when it has the budget and it wants to raise some money, it'll impose a tax on items which are important to us, like petrol and uh, food stuff and electricity, the essentials, because we have to buy them. We can't really go without. These are important for us in this day and age. So the government will impose a tax on those items, which are inelastic. The demand does not vary. It's inelastic. It doesn't stretch. The demand does not vary as the government increases the price. We still purchase around the same amount. So the government gets what it imposes as a tax. So in the past, tobacco was important. Alcohol, as I said, petrol. And I've already covered this point, but... Those are the items, or items similar to these, that are important to us that the government will impose a tax on. So, for example, on petrol, they will impose a tax on petrol. Uh, as we shift towards electric cars and they become more and more important to us, the government may start to impose a tax on some other aspects of motoring. For example, um, place a, a tax on every car on the road or something of that nature. They'll have to find another way of raising their money. Price setting. Well, price setting, uh, price setters will want to know how sensitive their demand is to changes in price. And the more sensitive that an item is, the more elastic it is, they, they will be more reluctant to change the price. Certainly, they'll be more reluctant to increase the price. They might decrease the price and get a lot more sales, and that might be profitable. They need to study what's going to happen for a price increase and for a price decrease. But if, if the demand is very sensitive, they have to be very careful. Exchange rates is also uh, relevant. Um, it's a more sophisticated point. Uh, when the exchange rate moves, it will change the price of imports and exports. That's what the exchange rate does. It changes the price of imports and the price of exports one against the other. So the government will want to know how sensitive the demand for imports is to changes in the exchange rate. It won't just change the exchange rate or try to influence the exchange rate up or down unless it knows what the impact is. Okay, so the slope of the demand curve. Uh, the slope of the demand curve does not indicate elasticity. Most students of economics start off by thinking the slope of the demand curve tells us what the elasticity is. Well, there are two curves which, in which this is correct. One, if the, the demand curve is vertical, then the elasticity is zero. But it has to be vertical. 
The other is if it's horizontal. The elasticity is infinite. So these two are fine. And then there is a third one, which is called unitary elasticity. And uh, that's the elasticity is fixed all along it. So there are three cases where the elasticity along a demand curve is constant. The rest, it varies all along the curve. So uh, it's a trick question, really. Many students seem to fall over it. We must first bear in mind that the slope of a straight line demand curve is not an indication of its elasticity, generally speaking, with the exception of the three I've mentioned, vertical, horizontal, and what we call unitary. And I'll show you unitary in a different class. Um, that's going to come up in, in a different class and it also will appear in seminars. So we'll leave that one for the moment. Um, there are exceptions to this, but in general, the scale of the axis, the location of the curve and the position of the curve will determine, determine its elasticity. So what we need to bear in mind, elasticity will depend on the scale of the axis and where the curve is positioned in the diagram, the further from the origin or the closer to the origin. Um, so let's have a look at um, uh, these two demand curves. Now, both curves represent the demand for a particular product. However, both curves have different quantity scales. So this one here is measured in um, tens of units, and this one here is measured just in units. So it looks, it looks different because it's, the scale is different here. It's the same demand curve, it just the scale is different. So you can't tell by looking at the demand curve if it's elastic or inelastic. And that's a mistake many students make. So one may have, for example, the, uh, the axis, as I say here, measured in tons, and the other one may be measured in kilograms. It's the same, it's the same item, just different ways of measuring it. So we get two what looks like different demand curves, but we can't go on and say that the, the one on the right is more elastic than the one on the left, more responsive to price changes than the one on the left, which seems to be less responsive to price changes. Um, the illusion is caused by the horizontal axis, by the scale on the horizontal axis. It'll be, we just simply can't compare two items, uh, two diagrams, because they're totally different goods. Carrots and books. Carrots and books don't have very much in common. So we can't just look at them and say, oh, carrots are more elastic or less elastic or whatever. They're two totally different products. So they can't be compared, despite what we sometimes say in classes. Um. Okay, we can, we, I think we've looked at that one. So, the elasticity figure, and this is the important point, the elasticity figure is just a number. It's not uh, associated with any units. For example, you can't say the elasticity is uh, two kilograms. There's no unit, it's just two. It's just an integer. The number is two, or it's three, or it's a half, or whatever it is. So, it's just a number when you work it out. And that's our introduction to elasticity. We will do many more calculations. We'll do them in class and so on. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll look at this one in much more detail as we go through the, the subject. But let's leave it at that for the moment and say thank you for watching.